We all need friends, but what we dream about is money, fame, the summer house, yachts, fast cars, fast women. But in reality, all we need is someone special with whom I can share the best moments of my life. If the secret I'm about to expose to you were a prescription, it would be universally prescribed. Without this in your life, you're on a path to a slow, bitter and miserable death. Sounds a bit dramatic, right? But hang on a second. Because there's more to this than you might think. Science has a word or two about doing life alone. And from what my brain can comprehend, it doesn't end well. Studies throw around facts like loneliness equals smoking 15 cigarettes a day. Harsh, right? Now picture this, you're at the edge, about to discover the one thing that can flip the script on loneliness. Dial down the stress and supercharge your life expectancy. Ready for it? It's the magic of friendship. That's right, those bonds, those connections we forge with the people we choose as our tribe. They're not just nice to have, they are life-changing. Every laugh shared, every midnight chat, and every fist bump from a friend is secretly working overtime. Boosting health, dodging stress, and even adding years to your life. It's like having a superhero squad in your corner. But instead of capes, they come armed with inside jokes and unconditional support. You saw the whole thing right through the ceiling. Big and green and buck-ass nude. You an alien? No. Well then, son, you've got a condition. If friends are this important, we should make an effort to get more of them, right? So that's exactly what I intend to do. I'm on an isolated island for 23 days to see how many friends I actually can get in the time period. And my goal is to invite as many people as I can to join us at the restaurant at the end of our stay. But it's no point just inviting people. They shouldn't be stranger at this point. They should actually be our friends. So we have purchased some dog food because it appears that the neighbor's dog is alone on the terrace. That poor little thing, because he looks to be alone with all the poop on the terrace. And yeah, it just doesn't look like he has it very well. Try to make this dog my friend. A wise man once told me that you're the average of all your friends. So if you have a lot of good friends, you're probably a good guy yourself. Even though he doesn't look as wise on this video. If this dog is now my friend, I'm off to a very good start. Our chosen destination is an island in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean with a language none of us speak. The island has the most extreme landscape that I've ever seen, resembling an extreme version of Oahu, Hawaii. I will reveal where we are, but before we do anything, let's do a house tour because our house is amazing. This is of course the living room. The sofa is amazing and we have a humongous TV. I don't know how many inches it is, but it's for sure bigger than mine. Hopefully my wife don't start begging for a new TV. We also have two major guest bedrooms with ensuite bathrooms. We also have extra half a bedroom in case you meet some friends on the island. The master bedroom is amazing and with the ensuite bathroom that is really cool and an amazing view that is the main attraction of the room. The kitchen is so well equipped that you can make food for a whole football team. And the best thing, it's seating for everyone with 16 dining seats in the kitchen as well as the formal dining room. The garage is so huge that it's impossible not to create an echo in here. And it's made for entertaining, so we both have pool table, we have ping pong table, we have soccer table, and we have a dart game. This garage is amazing. If you haven't already guessed it, we are at the beautiful island Madeira. It's small, has many one-day tourists, and the language is Portuguese. Something that makes this challenge a little harder than I wish it was. If I follow a five-step model I could find on Google, I should do as follows. Number one, start a conversation. Number two, show interest. Number three, smile. Number four, share a personal thing. You are so <laughs> sad, bro. Yeah, oh, sad. Oh. <laughs> that means semen in Norwegian, by the way. <laughs> and number five, do a small favor. This sounds easy enough. Before we dive into to this challenge, let me paint a bigger picture for you. The Instagram travel life you dream of is one big lie. Most people who set out a path of travel end up very lonely, and my story is no different, but more on that in a second. Most of the travelers I've met traveling alone are trying as hard as they can to make friends, which can sometimes make them seem too outgoing and maybe a bit weird. One of the best ways to make friends with your wife is annoying her. <laughs> <laughs> 
They wander from place to place seeking connections, but not always knowing how to find them. It's not just travelers who feel lonely. In fact, a study done in the United States have shown that 49% of all Americans have less than three friends. If I knew this one thing sooner, I would have done things differently. Let me explain. Me and my wife sold our house in May 2022. With our bank accounts full of money, we were eager to start traveling the world. We didn't make any plan. All we knew was that we wanted to live in Mexico. Spoiler alert. We were wrong. We started our stay with amazing luxury resorts like Palmaya and Excoret Arte. But of course, that was only a short-term thing. As they were removing $1,000 every day from our bank account. That's not the only short thing that I have. I'm talking about my plan. It was actually so short-term that when we checked out of Excoret, we hadn't even booked a new place. I think that's the most stressed I've ever seen my wife. We jumped into a taxi on our way to Playa del Carmen and started looking at hotels while we were driving. The cool part is that we found a pretty cool place with an even cooler fitness instructor. Okay, okay, I'm jabbing away. This was not supposed to be about our last two years of travel, but about something much greater and the one sentence that changed everything. The thing is, pretty soon I started to feel a bit isolated. I started to feel a bit lonely because, well, I had no friends in Mexico. When a hurricane came bashing towards Mexico, we found a once in a lifetime adventure that we just had to do. I'll come back to that very soon. But first, I want to tell you that Brazilian Jiu Jitsu has been a huge part of my life. Starting as a teen, it has changed my life to the better in so many ways that I can't even start to explain it. The thing is, when COVID left China, my body also left the gym. I started to focus more on strength training and running. Running is probably the most boring thing I know, even though it's amazing for your health. I never started BJJ again, until the big moment that I will share with you soon. Our big once in a lifetime adventure to cross the Pacific Ocean from Hawaii to Australia changed everything. If you ever wondered about doing that cruise, do it. It's one of my highest travel recommendations. On the cruise gym, I saw a dude wearing a BJJ t-shirt. I was eyeballing the shit out of him. He probably thought I was going to throw him overboard. That's when I dropped the sentence that changed everything. As quirky as it may sound. Hey, do you practice Brazilian Jiu Jitsu? Instant connection was created. And the next thing you know, we were rolling on the ship's floor. Even though it's the hardest map I've ever sparred. The on. thing is, that one sentence led to an adventure in Australia that I never could foresee. It even led to meeting up in Japan for a couple of weeks a year later. Sometimes one sentence can create a whole new friendship. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Life gets darker as soon as your friends aren't around. And when something hinders you from doing your passion at the same time, I start to feel a little bit like this. Okay, so let's talk about it. I don't know if you've ever broken a bone in your chest before, but what I can tell you is that it hurts. And it actually hurts so much, you are just laying on your couch for over a week and you don't get a lot of exercise. So what I've done for weeks is actually getting way less exercise than I'm used to. And normally I'm training Brazilian Jiu Jitsu every single day, even two times a day. But what happens is when I'm injured as now, I can see the changes in my body. So I can see I'm getting a little less muscle mass, I'm getting a little bit fatter. It annoys me more than what I ever can express to anyone else. Why I'm telling you this is because I'm going down to a Brazilian Jiu Jitsu gym. And right now, I don't feel very confident. Normally, when you train Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, you can wear a kimono or a gi. And if I were to wear a gi, it would be no problem. But I have to wear a t-shirt. And for me right now, I don't have any t-shirt that I feel comfortable in. And that's just how simple it is. I guess what I'm trying to tell you is that we all have our inner demons. And I get if you don't feel 100% every day as well. But in this video, I'm gonna show you that if you go out of your comfort zone, it can be a really beautiful thing. I found a t-shirt that I think is okay, but one of my best friend Niklas, he is going to bully me as hell for this because he bullies me every time he sees me in this t-shirt. Because <laughs> the truth is, I actually wore this to my wedding dinner. Yeah, it was in Mexico. It was a flip-flop kind of thing. It wasn't like the real uh, wedding weddings that you would think. It was just a dinner at the beach and it was actually not a real wedding dinner. So yeah, but it actually happened. So 
I actually wore this to the wedding and he has bullied me for it since. Looking back at this now, I can see that I was in very bad shape at the time. But here I'm playing with some leg entanglements, I'm doing some passes, just playing around. He was rolling around, so I managed to get him into a turtle position and take his back. Then it's a John Wayne sweep, just a timing thing. You see I'm going very slow, it's just like pure timing. Then I'm doing some passes that I've been playing around with. It's fun to go into the knee on the belly and into an armbar. This armbar is actually very tight, even though it doesn't look like it. I'm taking his hand and pulling it towards his knees. This makes it impossible to do the hitchhiker escape, as he will come himself. Talking about Kimura's hair I'm doing then a baseball choke that would be a little tighter with knee on the belly and then a rear naked choke. Being at the gym is not just about being a douche and tapping everyone so that's why I'm explaining him to roll out of the toe hold so that he can learn something from the experience of being tapped out. I think this is an easier way for people to remember and get something out of every roll. I'm also playing nice with this guy allowing him to pass me and then going up to a third position and then actually submitted him right after but that's not the point. The point is we're here to learn not to smash. But now let's head back to the car. I just finished training it wasn't really the type of gym I was looking for. It's really, really nice people. It's just that I didn't feel the true friendship connection that I really want. I hope I can find another gym here on the island. There's not many gyms, but I think I have a possibility with a CrossFit gym that I saw on Google because it said on Google that they have BJJ. So let's take a look into that and uh, see where that goes. Okay, so I got this phone number from a CrossFit center down here. They said that this guy is training Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. That's everything I know. I just want to find a couple of good clubs and see what kind of level of Brazilian Jiu Jitsu it's here on the island. It's a very good way to meet people and hopefully eventually I meet someone who I really connect with. But let's try to call Maybe him. he don't even answer because of the foreigner number but let's try. What's the worst thing that can happen? Okay, so there was no answer, but let's try again later. I can send a text message. So that's exactly what I did. A little after I got a response. Hello friend, good afternoon. I don't speak English very well. If you want, we can talk via WhatsApp because writing is better for me. I would appreciate it. My next move was to send a message on WhatsApp and I got the opening hours and a link to Big Body Gym, where BJJ Madeira is located. So let's go down and take a look. I'm finally here at BJJ Madeira. I'm 30 minutes early. I'm going to go up to the gym. I found parking pretty close to the gym, but parking Parking in Madeira is hell to find. So, see you there. That spot was marked with an M, so there was this guy who wanted my parking. And I think it means like local people or something like that, that it's uh, reserved for local people. Uh, I just paid for the parking, which I guess is okay. I found another one, it's not as close to the gym. And let's just hope that I am allowed to park here. This has to be the most local gym in all of Madeira, because there's only local people here. No one speaks English or anything, so this will be interesting. Hopefully some of the people at the Brazilian Jiu Jitsu class speak English. Yes, it's a little easier to make friends when you speak the same language, right? And the coach doesn't speak a single word English. This will be interesting. I only filmed one of the round the first time I visited BJJ Madeira. Here you can see another baseball choke and then I'm trying to catch his arm. Eventually going for the John Wayne sweep. I love that sweep. It's very easy to get. If you have strong and heavy hips, I recommend practicing that a lot. Eventually that John Wayne sweep ended with a pass and then I did a Kimura kind of thing to his arm. I don't remember exactly what I then did. Then I'm doing a North South choke, trying to have my head far down his hips so I don't get the Seacule choke myself. He approved. Then I'm doing a Choi bar. It's an arm bar kind of thing, but you have a lot of options like Kimura, Tarko Plata and so on. All right, so I'm in the car again after training. I think this gym might be what I am looking for, but I don't really feel any closer to achieving my goal of inviting people to a restaurant. I don't feel close enough with them yet, but a lot can happen in a couple of weeks. So let's just cross our fingers that <laughs> I actually managed to make a video and don't make a fool out of myself for all of you guys on YouTube. Because what I want to show you is how amazing the Brazilian Jiu Jitsu community is. From my my experience uh, traveling around the world, there's really nothing like the Brazilian Jiu Jitsu community. And I have never seen how amazing the community is on a video before. I really, really, really want to show the uniqueness of the Brazilian Jiu Jitsu community and how inclusive it is. Because it's truly inclusive all over the world. Just a couple of weeks ago, I was in Spain. Just after a couple of trainings, the instructor actually asked me if I could show some of my techniques in class. And of course I did because I really love sharing the art of jiu-jitsu. I take it as a big compliment. I'm a stranger to them, but in just two trainings, we're not strangers anymore. And he trusts me with all his students. For me, that is something truly amazing. Okay, since we didn't have any friends yet, we went out and explored the island instead. And this is what we saw. Ooh. 
later this day, there was a carnival in Madero, which is one of the biggest in Europe. We actually met up with Sergio and his beautiful wife, Jessica. Sergio is this guy that I met on training and we took a beer after the carnival. It's amazing to see how large they have created a carnival on Madero. And it's very cool that they are actually putting this much effort into it. The next day I went back to BJJ Madeira and I filmed a round with Jay. He calls himself Sweet Dreams, but today it was he that got the dreams. You just witnessed a pretty poor entry to the deep half guard. And then I'm doing an elevator sweep that you can see here. And then straight into an over underpass that I really like. And we had to stop the round and reset and normally I just reset the guard. Then I can practice passing the guard again as I'm doing here. We had a pretty good scramble passing the guard, which is always fun. Then you can see me pulling out my lapel to do the lapel choke and then deadlift lifting it down in the end. That always feels good, as it is one of the tightest chokes that you have from side mount. And tapping is the most common outcome. So I just finished training. I'm sorry for the low voice and enthusiasm, guys, but uh, it's 11 o'clock and Ida is sleeping, so I don't want to wake her up. But I have good news. We are one step closer to hosting the barbecue because the trainer at the gym invited us to an acai place tomorrow. And the guy who owns the acai place is also one of the guys working out in the gym so he's going to be there the coach is going to be there so now we are one step closer to hosting this barbecue the acai place is a full-blown cafe called loft but this one meetup led to a lot of amazing things so let's jump on the next adventure so we are on our way to meet mateus and eric <laughs> If you're a man, you probably know the feeling of coming home a little later than what you told your wife. So hopefully I will survive until tomorrow. Because we are going to see the sunrise on the highest point of the island. It's five o'clock in the morning, so it's super early. And we were out drinking a little bit last night. <laughs> so I'm pretty tired. This place is insane. I've never seen anything like it. We are above the clouds and it's a sunrise. It was time to get off the mountain and do a hike with our new local friends. That wasn't as local as we thought they were. The locals we are traveling with are the best locals ever. They ask the Germans for directions. We are on a hike with these guys and ah, we can already see the waterfalls. There's no venomous spiders here, are there? No, no. <laughs> But they're definitely our monkeys, and they look like this. <laughs> These was hand carved. Yeah. Wow. Probably by Eric's generation. <laughs> <laughs> That's like stuff you shouldn't post on YouTube. <laughs> What do you want to say to YouTube? Go out and let's enjoy your life. Turn on this computer. Turn off. Turn off. But watch the video. <laughs> watch the whole video, please. And subscribe if you can. <laughs> <laughs> Ida is feeding a wild bird. Now I've seen that as well. So when we walked down from the hike again, the guys showed us one of the most popular Instagram spots on the whole island. Boyfriend there, <laughs> taking picture of yeah. birds. <clears throat> Neck twisted. <laughs> Ida is filming her. You told me to Shut up. <laughs> So we are sitting here enjoying some coffee. Imagine the malls in Madeira has a view like this. They don't have a view like this in my home country. We're here with 
the guys from the training and Fabiano on my side here, he doesn't speak English, but maybe he has some words of wisdom in Portuguese. Yeah. É muito bom tomar um bom café com uma vista desta maravilhosa da Ilha da Madeira com o sol em pleno inverno na Europa, mas a Madeira parece que é verão. Por isso você que esteja aí assistindo esse vídeo, dê o seu like aí e venha conhecer a Madeira, que a Madeira é muito bom. Os I have no clue what he said, but spam the comments so I get to know. <laughs> what did he say? Okay. Coffee with sand. I taught him one, one Norwegian word and he reuses it all the time. What do you think? Very nice. Very nice. Yeah. He has learned a lot of English this week. <laughs> I'm on the way to pick up some local people from the Brazilian Jiu Jitsu gym and you are going to see something incredible. I don't want to spoil what it is just yet, but just wait for it. I promise you, this is worth the wait. As we drive up these curvy roads to the mountain, it kind of feels like a Jiu Jitsu practice. You know, it's full of twists and surprises, but that's what keeps it exciting. We're not just headed to any spot, we're climbing up to the top of Madeira, where the view is as breathtaking as a well-executed sweep. Up there, it's just us, our mats and the sky. It's the perfect place to spar, because every challenge feel a bit lighter with a view like that. It's like each role teaches us a little more about pushing past our limits, trusting our friends and really soaking in the moment. So here's to making the most out of this climb, on the road and on the mat. If I could give you one advice out of this video, it's to let moments like these really count. And that's exactly what my friend Fabiano did here with this nice sweep. Me and Fabiano is just flow rolling, pointing out different things along the way to like be aware of it. Fabiano is really, really fun to roll with. He's a, I think, fourth degree black belt. Very good in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu in general. And he has a fun style. He's flexible and have good conditioning. He's a little lighter than me, so he's also quick at his feet. I actually have pretty quick feet myself, even though I weigh 100 kilos. As you can see on my foot sweep here on Eric. I had a very fun roll with Eric here. As you can see on the toe hold, if you drop your knee down beside his hip, you don't have any chance to roll out of it. So just so you know, that's how you make it much tighter. Then I went into a kind of a sequence where I pass his guard with a back step. Then I'm going into a berambulo kind of thing. It's a fun and usable technique. Just be aware of the risk of doing it because it can always be reversed. But if you spend enough time in a position, you should manage fine. I finished it all off with an arm bar. As you can see, both of us are aware that it's no need to crank because we trust each other. Here we have Fabiano proudly showing off his weaker team and then you have Eric and Mateus, really awesome dudes and always doing something fun to make you laugh. I had a goal for our travel to Madeira. I was going to collect as many friends as possible and invite them to a restaurant. The thing is, I did actually not succeed in my mission because I never invited anyone to a restaurant. They invited me. And to be fully transparent, it happened before everything that you actually saw. It only took three days to gather over 10 people at a restaurant. And here are some fun moments from when we were out eating. Oh, I'm hungry. Bulo do caco Bulo do con, caco con Nutella. Nutella. Yeah. <laughs> Seven years without. Seven years without, without what? Without sex. sex. Without sex. Yeah. The curse. That can be a problem. <laughs> Good thing I'm not Portuguese. <laughs> <laughs> Here we eat meat like that. That looks very nice. Cachorro louco, did it. Cachorro louco, crazy dog. Yeah, crazy dog. Yeah. Oh, my God. Espetada madeirense. Espetada madeirense. Madeirense. Espetada madeirense, é. Yeah. Good, good. Eu sou vesco, eu sou vesco. Outra expulsão é só na madeira. Ai. Não, brother. Olha lá que vai tirar lá, ó. Olha lá. I love you, baby. Olha aí, Carilho, tá filmando. <laughs> As a thank you to BJJ Madeira for creating a chapter in my life that I will remember forever. I wanted to give something back. I took some images and scraped together a website that I gave to Fabiano and here's his reaction. Yeah, yeah, that's a his ad. Family. Family. Yes. Yes. Us. 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 <laughs>